On the bank of the Nicola River, in the Indian village of Chalus, there lived long ago an old blind medicine man named Kalora. Miserably poor he was, and barely able to support himself and his wife. Though he called himself a medicine man, he did little but dream. For long hours he would sit before his house, basking in the sun. Often his wife upbraided him for his idleness. There are other blind men in the world. They have baskets to make, beads to polish, and twine to spin. And you sit there grinning at the sun. When some poor sick fool comes to you, after every doctor in three days' march has failed him, take four sweat baths, you say. Fast four days. It's four of this and four of that. Bah! Any fool could give such advice and get more for the giving of it. The blind man would take no offense, but would sit as though he had not heard a word of her railing. Only one sound was certain to rouse him. The cry of the loon. A strange restlessness overcame him. His blind hands fumbled for his stick, and he would grope his way up the trail by the little creek which flows out of Mammoth Lake. Sometimes he would be gone for days. One year, snow and bitter winds ushered in the coldest winter the village had ever known. The hunters returned with empty hands. They told of much hunting, but little game. And so it was day after day. The women mourned their starving children. Even the youngest and strongest of the hunters returned empty-handed. Famine threatened the village. The chiefs and medicine men debated whether they should send the young men to the neighboring villages of Kamloops and Lillooet with articles to trade for food. The next day, Kalora warned them. The wolves too hunger and soon they will venture into the village and attack our children. The whole village derided him. <laughs> Even the village idiot sneered. <laughs> that day at dusk, they heard the cry of the wolves. Last, Kalora decided he must use his magical powers to save the village. In his youth, he had spent many days alone in the distant hills, communing with the spirits of nature. would the spirits permit the donning of his sacred collar of dentalium shells, the use of his magical bow, and the chanting of his sacred songs.
shot from the magical bow, the arrow could not fail to find its mark. did not come again, and there was peace in the village. When spring came, Kalora determined to go once more into the hilltops to seek his father, the loon. All day he wandered in the forest, listening for that stirring cry, but hearing it not. As he felt the glow of the setting sun upon his left cheek, he knew that the little lake was right ahead of him. He was plagued by mosquitoes. Startled by the harsh cry of the night bird. The night winds swept the forest, bringing a thunderstorm. Quickly the storm was over, and the pale moon sailed across the sky. my father the loon, help me yet once again. A voice answered him, what is it that my son desires? I am blind, my father, and I would see, Kalora answered him. Climb upon my back. Kalora climbed upon his back. The loon dived below the waters and swam swiftly and strongly toward the far shore. Can you see now, my son? I see, but not as a man should see, for there is yet a thick fog about my eyes. Four times the loon plunged into the water and swam beneath the surface. Now I see, cried Kalora. I see, and he turned to give thanks. None but the dearest of his treasures would suffice. Kalora drew off the collar of shells and tossed it gently towards the loon. The collar wrapped itself around the bird's neck and a few shells broke from the cord and fell scattered on his back. And so, surely it was then that the loon received his necklace. <coughs>